Welcome back on NBS Television. This is The Big Talk. My name is Kanara Mgume, and we are also live on Next Radio 106.1 FM. And uh, if you want to follow this conversation, the hashtag on Twitter is hashtag NXT Big Talk, and also stream live online, nextradio.co.ug forward slash live. Now, Mukono Municipality race is what we are talking about, and we're saying... Uh, MP Betty Nambo is seeking for a re-election after 10 years in Parliament, but she has challenges. 15, 15. Years. I think before she was in Mukono North. Oh? No? No. 15 years. 15 years. Don't me 15 it. years in Parliament, and now she's seeking for a re-election. I mean, she wants to go for an extra five years, but the men here are saying that they want to unseat her. She says she's still on her way, so maybe she will join us in the last minutes of the show. Um, you had concerns over what had been uh, Yeah, about the, the concern I had was a very interesting one. You know, when in Uganda you talk about uh, corruption tendencies, you, t you tend to push them on one side, but the whole society, I think, is corrupt corrupted. Of course, the people in the positions uh, of responsibility today, yeah. and uh, more so because they tend to to be influenced by some people in the government, I think we need, I needed to find a, a solution that my brother wants to use. Because I believe the systems are there. Mm. But the people are actually overriding the systems. Need to overhaul them. So uh, he had a very interesting uh, <laughs> proposal that I wanted to, to, yeah. just to hear more. Firing everyone and yeah. arresting everyone. Well, well, maybe, can, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe you can when give Mr. him an, an opportunity to clarify. Uh. When Mr. Sentam becomes the president of this country, he has trained many of us as his cadres, and our fabric of leadership will not compromise corruption. Everywhere you go, you find all those services we are missing is because our leaders have compromised their positions from the mayor, from the LC5 <laughs> from the... So when you come yeah. into power, you'll fire everyone. When you, when you come into power, we, we either fire you or we train you in values that people, the common person needs, so that the service delivery is improved. What, Suddenly what? we need to change. I, I, I what, need what, to what are your thoughts on that? I, yes. I need to and respond. the time is mm. now. After. What, what, what are your I, thoughts I, on that? I give him opportunity and then I'll respond. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Kanae, this, this is a program where people at the level of legislators are extending views. Yes. And actually, it is absurd when we start uh, uh, discussing issues which are far-fetched. Because what type of government are you going to run when you have chased everyone? Are you going to put it in the sky? I said we are going to no, modify them. I think, I think Mr. Kanae, in terms we, of character. We, we need to be a little bit sober at this level. Because you, you're, you're saying his ideas are not realistic. <laughs> no, they are not realistic at all. I didn't say we are going to fire everybody. We are going to change. No, that's what you fabric. actually said. You said you're going to overhaul the entire system. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. overhaul those who don't suit the position where they are, so the or whose character, or whose mm. who's moral okay, fabric does not respond. match. Yeah, right. I wanted to respond. You know, this is the biggest problem that Uganda has got, corruption. First of all, you need to set say, systems. We have systems in place. Then you need to enforce them to be implemented. And you need to show examples. So, we, in Uganda, we need to see the Lego judiciary doing what they are supposed to do independently. And we need to see that uh, when somebody has been committed, he is actually punished for that. Mm. We've got many people that the judiciary has actually uh, taken decision, but when somebody goes to be punished for it, tomorrow is, is, is opened from the prison. So I think we need to see a government that is actually prepared, not only to talk about it, but to make sure that that is done. Then in Uganda, not everybody is really corrupted. There are still some good people that we need to, to, to use, we'll eh? to and them. there are some people that can be changed. Uh, for me, I stand, and I'm not talking about because I'm here, because I'm going to campaign. 
I want to ask anybody during my leadership to come and say, when I came to, to, to my to office to be served, uh, George Kajima asked me for money. <laughs> never. Mm. And it has never happened. And it will not happen. So we still have some people like that. But we need to make sure that our laws, the way we have set up, we respect them. And we have a government that will respect them. And we actually uh, implement them in the same way, whether that's you or whether that's him or it's, him or it's me. So that is what is lacking today as far as corruption is concerned. Okay, for, for the issues of Democratic Party, you're the current chair at... Uh, yeah. Ah, okay. 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 okay, go on. Okay, okay. go on. You have, you have two minutes. Now, the, the issue of land, language, mm. especially land. Mm. Uh, you see, when you look at a problem, uh, at times people treat the problem uh, from the top. But we need to make a proper diagnosis and find out where exactly the problem emanated, the genesis of the problem. I happen to be an advocate, and having gone through law school, we, I mean, take a lot. We, we, I mean, we are taken through a lot of these issues. So the problem here, as an authoritative aside, is colonial, which various uh, stakeholders have tried to collect, mm. but because of the issue of putting politics into the streamlining of the, the, the issue of land management in the country, has brought a problem. I happen to have been a lot, political a lot, uh, and, and away, when, when we made our constitution. Uh, I remember President Seven when, uh, I mean, completing the process of making the constitution, President Seven made remarks which I will never forget, and I want to remind everybody. He said that, yes, we well, made this constitution, but there are certain issues where I am not happy, even when I, have, uh, I am going to ascend to it. Bend. Yes, and one of the issues was land management, the UPDF being turned into Uganda for different faces and mm -hmm. some other issues. So that's where, that's why President Seven, in trying to correct the problems uh, that are uh, faced with the land management in the country and putting a lot of politics into it is one of the problems that we need to address. First and foremost, when, we, when the Land Act of 1998 was made, it, it, it was a good law. But it was never implemented. Instead, another amendment was made. You remember that, that amendment of 2010, when the Kabak of Uganda appointed the USAC committee, and we, I mean, tried to advocate mm. against whatever was being planned in that in that day. But even when it was made, it was made. I can I can say it's, it's a kind of a good law, mm. but its implementation. Uh, we also suggested that if government, because now the bigger problem arises from the dual ownership of land. You find Mr. Sozi, the land owner, the registered proprietor, mm. and you find Zidimala Chikungu, the Chibanda holder. We are now co-owning the land, okay? There is conflict of uh, interest, conflict of ownership. The other I'm saying, I'm now having a land title, I am not benefiting from my land. I'm here at Chibanda Older, I cannot allow him to come and stab in to, uh, tamper with anything of the land. So that problem, you find that many people prefer selling off their land. Yeah. Now that big, I mean, uh, weeks in NRM have misappropriated and stole a lot of money, they now they are now finding where to invest it. Now they're investing it in, in land. So that's why you find that even land prices have risen, especially in Uganda. You cannot now find anyway in Uganda where land is not costly. Mm. It's because people have stolen a lot of money, they now find we are trying to find where to put that money. So we had suggested that if government can put, do away, can put away something called dual ownership of land and put a land fund whereby the land, I mean the landowners are paid off and then these tenants, the tenants, the Bibanja holders are given titles, then they pay slowly by slowly. I think that will solve the problem. But in a system where Mr. Strozzi is having a title, registered proprietor 
or brought, brought so and so, where so many tenants sit on that land. He find he's not benefiting. What he will do is to find a uh, Salim Sare in, in courts. <laughs> in, uh, I'm not saying the, 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 the person, but a Salim Sare in courts to come and buy the land. Then a Salim Sare will come and use the uh, state machinery, will use his money to, to if we the judiciary and chase our food for land. So this is where the problem arises. So uh, that's why, like, because I happen to come from the Democratic Party. Uh, the, the only problem is that we have not got an inspiring presidential candidate, but DP is the only party in what? It is a party that... No, you're saying that Nobat Mao is not uh, worth it? I mean, he's like, not an inspiring candidate, according to the voter, because he's contested mm. twice. But how many votes did he go? Did he get? I'm not saying it's not competent. So you, who are you going to campaign for in the presidential elections? Sorry? Who are you going to campaign for in the presidential Definitely. elections? Definitely. No, we have not decided who our presidential candidate is. I'm saying you. I, I, mean, I, I cannot I mean, campaign for a presidential candidate who has not been put in place. We are going in Guru to, uh, I mean, elect our presidential candidate. Because our constituents is clear, the presidential candidate automatically qualifies as, I mean, the party president qualifies as the president of candidates. Mm -hmm. So let's cross the river when we get in. When we elect our party president, if it's Mao, it may be the Matiburu, it may be another person, that is the person I will campaign for. But I've just said, from in my better opinion, that DP has got a very bad chance that a can, whichever candidates were uh, 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 presented mm -hmm. before the people, are not inspired. Because now, President Seven has put us in a state mm. of being uh, uh, frustrated, if I may say, that people now think, don't you see, don't you remember when Dr. Vesey came? Then they said, yeah, because this one is coming from the bush, he's also an animal, and the man, he managed to trust on Seven. Now, Bobby and I, Bobby Wayne has come. If he's, you don't find the president, you vote for Chagula. No, 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 my friend. There's no way you can fail to find the president. I've said, when we go fail, to Guru, uh, if you vote, when we go to Guru, we shall for vote for the party president and vote for that person. Yeah. But if DP happens to get into power, eh, to settle this problem once and for all, mm. it will be setting aside a land fund, which land fund is going, which should be used to pay off all landowners, the registered proprietors, and then these Vivanya holders are given land titles so that everybody is owning land perpetually. You have, you can sell it, you can do whatever you want, but with this problem of having landowners, registered proprietors, and Vivanya owners still in, in, in place, the problem of land wrangles will not stop. Oh, okay, thank you so much. I want to ask uh, Bassos there, how, what, what's NRM's plan to replace DP in Mukono? DP is deep rooted in Mukono, yeah, yeah. and you said it even before. Yes. So, how are you going to replace? And being an urban center, you may know that NRM, in one or another, sometimes it gets unpopular in urban centers like Kampala, Wakiso, Jinja, Mbale, and Mukono. So now, Nupa has taken over. Yeah, 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 you are right. <laughs> so, how, how, what's NRM's plan in replacing? Thank you, Mr. Mbale. Uh, one, uh, you see, it is unusual that uh, because I went through an opportunity. One, one of the strategies we came up, we realized that we, we, we do have, we, we get problems within the primaries when we compete. So this time we said, let us feed one candidate. Because any other in Mukono municipality is quite strong, and uh, sometimes there are our, our votes that make a plus to theirs so that they can win us. Yeah? So, so this time we said, let us have peaceful. Uh, primaries where we filled always we filled one candidate and this time for MP ship I, 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 I did not even participate in the in, in, in Kamiufu we call it Kamiufu in our in our party I, I went I went I went, I went, I went unopposed because all those who would have who had the interest said this time let us feed the same applies to, to other uh, positions we have Got a consensus that let us feed this one in this post, let us feed this one in this post. And luckily enough, you see, when I see my colleague uh, George and the Betty fighting, when they had a combined team <laughs> fighting us when they fought us in 2016. 
very hard that the infights in opposition just continue. The victory is automatically ours. <laughs> Exactly, this time. Is that even possible in the chair? Of course it's not possible. But I'd like uh, uh, to seek the clarification from this Tazini Mala, my colleague, mm. about land. He has clearly put up the point between a land road and a squatter. Uh, he made a remark at the beginning that he's paying for land for the health center. That area center belongs to the municipality, mm. and therefore we are supporters without a title. If he is paying for the land, and they actually we are not mm. even in know, how does he intend to deal with that issue of a landlord and a squatter, which happens to be the government? Mm. So will that not come to this kind of conflicts that has been mentioned? I would like that clarification. You might want to respond to that. If, if I have got it clearly, I said that Nyanja Health Center 2 mm -hmm. in Bukere Parish yes. is seated on land which is not theirs, in uh -huh. as legal owners. Mm. Okay? Yes. So they are, they are tenants, actually, Chivanja holder. Yes. So they, they, they have got 50, is it 50 decimals? Uh, yeah, 55 decimals, half an acre, but Chivanja holder. So the landowner is there, and the landowner is saying, please, by your tenancy. And uh, all along, uh, because this, this was a community, it was started as, as community, I mean, best something. The community started itself, then the municipality took over something that is, is already constituted. Yeah. So they are now looking for funds. So as I went, because I told you that I started this hospital, my phone structures that are vandalized, not worth the name, to a health center and we made it a health center. Now that they want to buy land, they, so that they be the legal owners of that land, okay? So I'm not buying land for myself, but I'm buying land for the hospital, which hospital belongs to the community. Now, after settling the, the, the purchase price, which is 30 million, I've now paid a considerable amount. So after settling it off, I'll hand over the title to the community Probably the title will be kept in the coffers of the district or the municipality because I understand now the municipality takes charge, if, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So know? I'm just buying land as a person, but buying it for the community. As I started, I started that role, I must ensure that I complete it. Yeah, but, but what uh, I like, say... Like as if you're doing CSR. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like CSR, like corporate yeah. social responsibility. Yes. If you're just doing it as Yes, because that's, that's why I say yeah. that none of, of them... <laughs> I'm sorry to say, <laughs> first, I mean, first, my colleague, your boss. the chairman, no, my no, boss, no, no, yes, no, 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 and your boss, boss he has not even done it as a mayor, not even my, the, 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 are, my sister here. But, uh, but is, he, is, he, is, he, is he aware of the procedures relating something <laughs> like that, where the government is concerned and you go on and buy without even bringing it to the council no, no. and even... No, exactly. It's what I am saying. It's, it's like a what person, the public. No, 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 no. Like a person on. is free to make a donation to the public, and then the public. Because now, if you look at all schools we have, the so-called government-aided schools. Mm. Did the government start any school? Those schools were started by the Church of Uganda, the Catholic Church. But because of the policies in the country, Ministry of Education, they just took them over and started giving them aid. Yes. But the founding fathers of those wow. schools are. Huh? The, the, the churches. Mm. So it has no harm. It's not even illegal yeah. for a person like to go and buy land and donate it. It's not my land. When I finish settling it, the land title will be registered in the names of, I mean, not in my names, but in the names of the hospital, whatever I do. Now the, the, the modalities. I hope you don't reclaim it after. <laughs> How can I reclaim it? How can I? Because even the health center is not mine. It is I hope you are not even sued in the process. Why? No, no, I cannot be sued because I'm just <laughs> donating. donating. Yes. Is it illegal to donate to government? No, like yeah. I've said, how many people? If, because even look at many, very many hospitals, mm. land was donated by individuals. Now that I don't have land, I was not among those people who we got big chunks of land that I can donate, so I, I can use my small money, buy land, and donate to government. Okay. I don't think it, is, it has any problem. Okay, Legally, thank you so much. Sure. Thank you so much, Zimala. Yes. And now we have been joined the last minutes of the show by the incumbent, Honorable Betty Nambo Zebachileke. She has been on another show.
unfortunately been delayed there in between, but we are glad that you made it and uh, good to have you here on the show. You are seeking for a re-election in Mukono municipality. The people here are saying they are going to unseat you because unfortunately you've not done what they expected you to do. That you should go home and sleep and leave parliament for them. <laughs> your, 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 the, your, your, your colleague here, who is the mayor, um, is saying that perhaps you need to do more. They have not even seen you in some of the meetings that he talked about. But well, you respond to some of these issues. But also, what are you going to do for the people of Mukono municipality that you've not done in all these years? No, no, you have a microphone already. You can speak. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, well, uh, first of all, I want to offer my apologies for coming here late. You see, I got to know about this arrangement at night. And um, the first decision was not to come because I had already committed myself somewhere else. But I thought that this is a great opportunity you are giving to us politicians in view of the fact that we shall not even have many open campaigns because of the COVID crisis. So first of all, I want to register my appreciation that you have given us this show free of charge and given us an opportunity and Ugandans generally to see what Mukono has to offer. And you see, also make our small contribution to the development of Uganda. Um, the position for the member of parliament in Mukono is up for grabs. It's not my seat. I just serve in this position at the will of the people of Mukono. So, and then maybe I would have been very, very happy if I could pass such a test that I come an opposite. However, since I joined the politics, I've never gone through an opposite. Each time we get challenged. And, and this time round, in your own, in your, you have two challenges already. In a way, it is also healthy. First of all, I've done this job so well that everybody in Mukono thinks that it is an easy job to be done. And I want to take that as a credit. Two, the people so far standing are fellow leaders. Um, each one of us has, was given an opportunity to serve in one capacity or another, including my son here, Seguja. He was a youth counselor in the last term at Mukono district. So it is like we are all leaders. Zilimala here was a district counselor. Mr. Kajimu here is a mayor. So in a way, we are giving Mukono people an opportunity to select the best out of their best. Because we, we are, all of us have ever been in office because of an election. So. The temptation to think that uh, the position of a member of parliament is supposed to be used for community development in a given area is there. First of all, just because people don't know, and then secondly, because people can easily, you know, Ugandans generally don't, think, don't feel it like a very big thing to tell lies. It is as if politicians must tell lies all the time. So let me talk about the temptation to think that this is a community development office. Under normal circumstances, every Ugandan of age would sit somewhere and deliberate for himself. The concept of parliaments where they started in Greece Every able-bodied man paying tax would go to the place of the meeting and represent himself. That is exactly what, what would have, if, if, if it was possible. But you see, we are so many people, 40 million Ugandans today. And Uganda is divided into over 450 constituencies for representation of different people, just because not everybody can go to represent himself. So there is a national 
duty to do. And this national duty is a mandate of the population. So power belongs to the people, the Constitution says. And they will exercise it through their democratically elected leaders. That is the only reason why we have MPs. Otherwise, every Ugandan would sit somewhere and deliberate for his or her country. At the level of policy and laws. When you look at the Article 79 of the Constitution, and you read it about the functions of a member of parliament, it is exactly that one, to safeguard the Constitution. Two, to make sure that the country is governed in accordance to the laws and democratically. And three, to do anything that promotes the other two I've mentioned. Basically, we also do, um, you, you know, to cross, you know, to put the government because the executive is there. This is one arm of government, which is, which is supposed to deal with legislation and the policy formulation. Then the executive is supposed to do the work together with the technical people who are employed at the different levels in the country. But politics in Uganda is still growing, and partly highly compromised. That's why you find the people who want to be members of parliament promising to build, to construct the roads, take, take children to school. It's because of the situation we are living in that in, at a, no, democratically we are still a growing nation. We just have 50 years of independence. So we are still growing. We cannot compare ourselves to democracies like America that have existed for over 300 years now. So here we are. Being an MOP in this period of time, Uganda itself is at crossroads. So they say, let's get 450 men and women of reason to come and sit here and make decisions for the country. Look at the little we have as a, a nation and appropriate it and you know, create priorities for the country. Where do we want to spend our money? Where I've been, I've given them an example that we have been, we were moved as a parliament to pass a supplementary budget for COVID. But when we went to parliament, we ended up giving more money to the military than the medical, than health. You see, the army came with a, a proposal that we give them over 80 billion shillings. That is one section of the security, without including the police. 80 billion of the COVID money. And the Minister of, Inform of Health had applied for 62 billion. In the parliament, we said, you know, we want to give more money to the health department, and we gave them 104 billion shillings. So we are supposed to create priorities for this country. We have little, the little resources we have, how do we spend them? And unfortunately, because of the same thing that we are just a growing democracy, MPs have mortgaged their powers with the executive. When we go to parliament, we don't apply our own decision. Instead, we do things as President Seven wants. At least if we are to talk about the majority MPs that Mr. Sozi wants to join, that today, will it be proper for us in Mukono to increase our voice in relation to supporting Mr. Museveni in Parliament? Or we maintain what we have been doing, that our MP has been on the opposition of Mr. Museveni's government. I thought that's what you see. What I'm fighting for is that we have an, a new head of state in 2021. And if that is realized, I think the new head of state will need strong women and men in the parliament to be able to restart off this nation. And in the unlikely event that Museveni returns as the president, 
the people of Mukono and Uganda at large, they deserve a strong voice of reason, an activist for that matter. So the difference between me and some of my colleagues here is that for me, I'm, I, I hold this office as an activist. I don't leave things to go. I don't kneel where I'm not supposed to. Let me put this so, so uh, allow me to conclude okay. this. So we have about five minutes. I think um, this is a very good opportunity to the people of Mokon, that they have a number of people to choose from. And this is what we have had all the time. First of all, I faced Honorable Boba Kaluba Mukasa. He was the incumbent. One of the problems for which he was punished to be moved from office is failure to be active in the House itself. So the next election, I faced my own teacher, Mrs. Yiga Beatrice. And in the last election, I faced another leader. And uh, well, we won the elections. And we shall even win this particular election. But the most important thing, an MP is a national leader. You are not supposed to sit in parliament and deliberate things for Mukono. You are supposed to make decisions as a contribution of the people of Mukono to the national development and democracy. And I think if you were to look at that, the numbers will be scored so highly. Even when I've been sick, I don't know, I didn't know that my honorable brother here, Mr. Kajimudi, was not aware that I was sick. Nobody could say numbers that you have not been attending the meetings when I've spent two years sick. I've okay. been sick. Let, let, let. And then I did not get sick just from anywhere. I got sick at a job. I was serving my people when I, I was hurt. So I've not been able to attend some meetings, sure, true. And I think the people of Mukono can forgive me for that because I've not been. Okay, I've been sick and I've been nursing an injury. It even comes as a surprise that even in the same period when I've been sick, I was rated the eighth best MP in the country. Let me put this to you as we conclude this discussion. The people of Mukono are saying that you, the eventuality of leaving DP and going to NUP, uh, perhaps for a municipality like Mukono that has deep-rooted uh, roots in, in DP and, and, you know, having represented them for all these years mm. on the DP ticket that you just left DP and went to NUP and uh, inside NUP you're going to face challengers who are already uh, have appeared on the show here uh, that you deserve, they deserve an explanation because you are accountable to them. Did they tell you? Or you think that that is what they are saying? I don't think I know. I mean, you, 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 I, I want you to do your homework. Mm -hmm. Come to Mukono. Talk to the people. You see, Mukono, it is not Betty Numbers who crossed over to NUP. I could not do that. I'm a people's leader. I'm their property. It's not me. It's a whole, whole DP branch that relocated. And for reasons which, for which we don't have time here to discuss, issues to do with the uh, internal administration of our party in DP, and the people decided. So I, I did not go alone. I went with the entire structure of the party. <laughs> and if, even when you look here at, at Kampala... Let me show you that you did not go with the entire structure. Hey. The chairman of DP is here. You did not go with him. The spokesperson of DP is there. <laughs> So, the structure, you see, brother, my son, if you, if you will get to know how these people became chairmen and spokespersons, let that be a debate for another day. At least they are the official ones we know. Oh, definitely. So the and I'm, I'm, not I'm not begrudging them. Most, 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 probably, most probably, most probably, their elevation to those offices is one of the reasons the, people, the, the entire DP membership in Mukono felt that we have been really uh, treated so badly, it's time to move. In any case, my people were even bitter that I had taken long to do what the, 
I did finally. I've never taken my, my, my supporters for granted. I don't do it. You see, we have a very, very big problem in EDP. And I don't think that this is the right platform now to discuss it because you will not give us time if yes, I yes, go into right. all of those, we, we actually those things. You see, minute. for me, I was, I was the chairman of DP in Mukon. Mm -hmm. If you look at the party constitution, for example, I would have been the person to organize the meeting in which these people would have been uh, you had elected. The problems already in DP. You see? <laughs> but <laughs> do you, did, was, did that meeting take place? It didn't. So, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to waste my time with that. First of all, what you have said is not representative of the people of Mokono. And in February next year, you will get to confirm it. Okay, I'll bring you back on the show. And uh, 30 seconds, honorable numbers, and this is a, I, I want you to give your, your parting shot on the show because I've had these gentlemen for, for about more than an hour and a half. So your parting shot on the show on why you think that, apart from you holding this chair as an activist and adding on to the voices of the opposition and opposing the policies from the ruling party that they do oppose that you think do not favor Ugandans, w w why else should the people of Mukono re-elect you? Give them a reason why. Why should you say that apart from that? Do you consider because that? You've already, do you, you've already do, about do you consider it. that to be a small issue? You've already talked about it. But then uh, uh, it is just that I'm the best among what they have. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just look at it that way. <laughs> That's all we had for on, on the show here on the Big Talk. We'll return next weekend. This has been the Big Talk. The conversation online is hashtag NXT Big Talk. And special thanks to you, uh, Honorable Betty Namboze. I know it's been hectic for you to move from one program to the other amid this uh, you know, short period of time, but at least you came you can and represented. Make this appeal to Ugandanese. Mm. Um, I want Ugandanese to request you not to demystify parliament. Mm. If you can look into that camera. A member of parliament is a national leader. In parliament, we speak for the country. And the work basically involving being a member of parliament is the ability to sit and discuss and carry on a debate. Mm. If we decide now to rate MPs in as far as they did community work, we will be cheating ourselves. Anybody who wants to work on roads, to empower women, to do business, to do what, what, should go in the local councils. That's where that mandate is. For me, I've done so many other things outside my role as a member of parliament. But where yep I've been, I don't highlight it because it is not my law. I just do it as just a surplus, an addition, just in the Gamba bonus. Hmm? But basically, that is not my duty. A member of parliament, even when elected in Mukono, Koboko Kotido, is a leader for every Ugandan. And you know, a member of parliament, although representing Mukono, does not work for Mukono while in the parliament, you work for the country, you Thank yes. you so much, Honorable Betty Nambozi Bachideke. Special thanks to Abbas Sozi Seguja for making time to come here. Special thanks to the mayor of Mukono, George Fred Kajimu of Democratic Party. Special thanks to Zilmara Chigundu of the Democratic Party, spokesperson there in Mukono. And also special thanks to Ivan St. Tongo from NUP. By the way, he says he's going to unseat you, but we'll see how okay. that goes. You know, and we don't know whether they give the, you the, 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 the flag. A primary, properly conducted. There is also another lady there. All right, there's also um, <laughs> another lady who <laughs> will not have uh, time also. to... Mm -hmm. Uh, speak to because that was of, uh, time would have allowed NUP. all of them to yeah. say yeah. something. Then we need to come back. Adija, she's also from NUP, and she's also saying that she's going to be there. That's all we had time, time for here on the an Big Talk. We'll return next weekend, and oh, 9 so we is the time. Oh. That next time, <laughs> Good morning when to you. We are